Jenny. Um, before I start, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm so privileged. I'm like almost in tears right now, but I really got to keep it in because my mom is here. My role models are here. I'm just trying to consume myself. Um, <clears throat> this poem that I wrote, can everybody hear me, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this poem I wrote is based on an idea by W.E.B. Du Bois. It's called Double Consciousness. Um, I don't understand what it's like to be black. I don't understand what it's like to be Latino. I only understand what it's like to be Muslim, and that's the only kind of pain I can assimilate with. And W.E.B. Du Bois says something about double consciousness. He says, what a blessing and a curse it is to always see yourself through the eyes of others before your own. It's this problem we have. Um, as Muslim Americans, we, that's why we always tend to apologize before we introduce. My mother always told me we are too comfortable validating what we're not rather than affirming who we are. And I love you all. <laughs> See what I have 
seen as injustice has been renamed mere privilege. But this is not about the shades of melanin that has your porous bones unsettling. This isn't a poem about the generic versus the genuine, the Mayflower to Assad's regimen. This is a poem about big rooms filled with bigger elephants. You have the right to remain silent, but the silence has left us settling. We tell ourselves I am one man as if it is a deficit to our soul's element. When will we understand that being one is the only prerequisite? How many revolutions did we leave translucent? What if I had a dream was left a dream and not a movement? A movement of moments. The truth was illuminated by the people. We hold these truths self-evident that all men are created equal. And remember when Malcolm X was told by his teacher to remain mediocre. She told him you'd be better off a carpenter than you could ever be a lawyer. And that's the thing about hatred. It has absolutely nothing to lose. So when it steps in, shame isn't even a shadow in the room. But Rosa Parks made a statement just by refusing to get up. She wasn't saying she wasn't less. She was declaring, I am enough. December 1st, 1955, she was a subtle storm with no signs of trouble. This woman moved mountains without moving a single muscle. <laughs> Tell me, what would we become if our eyes were just screens, our voices were just recordings, and our minds were sold antiques? Tell me, what would we be without a beating heart and two lungs? You know that they say the intention of the heart lies beneath the tongue. Movements don't mean violence. You are a movement with a mindset. You see, that's why they told you to stay silent because your words disprove science. So if you don't understand anything I've said, at least remember this. You can create movements that are birthed from the air pushing through your lips. The absolute least that we could do is absolutely everything. <laughs>